So this will probably be a quick video, but I wanted to demo a cool feature that we added to Project Planner AI, and that is the ability to manage and create change log entries so that your users of your system can kind of see how your application is changing over time. That's kind of the point of a change log. You add your updates, people who are interested can kind of watch the changes, understand the changes, try out new features as they come in. And also it's kind of good for search engine optimization if you have the web crawlers processing this change log because you have a lot of the keywords in here that can really help your product or your service get picked up in these engines. So we are on projectplannerai.com, which is a side project that me and Hosna, who's another YouTuber, are working on. And I have a thumbnail critique project set up, which over here is my thumbnail critique application, basically a way for people to explore thumbnails and give each other reviews on like what thumbnail is better. But one of the things I added to the top navigation is a change log. Now, again, the reason for this is I want to kind of update anyone using this application when I add new features in so they can kind of play around with them. So if I click on the change log, I want to show you something that this actually, although it has thumbnailcritique.com, it's loading the change log that is found on this projectplannerai.com, right? So if I go over here and let's just add an additional change log. So I'm going to say like, pretend I added a new feature. Down here, I'll just say like, just kidding. And then up here, I'll pick a date. Go ahead and pick today's date. Let's publish this change log and I'm gonna go back to my application and notice that it shows up right here, which is pretty cool because I actually don't have any code in my thumbnail critique to show this change log. I'm actually using a proxy under the hood. So let's kind of talk about how this works in Next.js because this is actually something that's built in directly into the framework and you might not have been exposed to it before. So over here on the left, we have a next config JS file. And in this config file, you typically have an object where you can specify like what images can be loaded remotely without throwing course issues. But down here, you can add another property called rewrites. And you can return an array of objects that basically say, hey, when someone hits a slash change log endpoint, so over here, if you go to slash change log, I want to actually proxy the request to a completely different domain. So over here you see it's making a request to Project Planner AI slash change log. And this is my plan ID. And so if I were to go over to Project Planner AI and click preview, you'll see that basically this URL is the same URL that I am pasting right here. And it's the same page that's being displayed when I go to change log. But the only difference is that it looks like it's under my own domain, which is nice, right? You don't have someone going to a completely different page you're just proxying the information from this URL into your application. So they kind of give a higher level overview in case this is something new. We have over here, we have our Next.js application. We'll call it thumbnailcritique.com. And when a user makes a request, I'll just go ahead and say put a user here. When this user makes a request to my application at slash change log, because of the Next.js config, it sets up basically a proxy router I don't really know the internals of it, I didn't look into it, but basically it's going to rewrite the requests and that's going to do a request to a completely different server slash domain, right? So again, this is another Next.js application I have that is projectplannerai.com. And this is gonna be hitting the route of change log and then I have like a hard coded ID. I'll just go ahead and say like ID one, two, three or something like that. And this is going to get returned and then the Next.js proxy is going to return that to the user's browser. So again, this is all transparent to the user. They don't know that there's actually this going on behind the scenes. All they see is that, hey, it looks like there's a change log built directly into this application that's being displayed here. But if you look at the network requests down here, go ahead and just refresh the page to show you, you will see that it's doing a request to projectplannerai.com under the hood. So if you look over here, there are already a bunch of chunks that are being loaded in so that the proxy Next.js application can be displayed and loaded properly. So I'd recommend go to the Next.js docs, read through this and just understand how this rewrites config kind of works because you may run into a situation where you want to basically change a, an old path and point it to a new path. You can do that kind of internally here. Um, what I did was rerouting to an external URL. So if you have like a separate blog system that is basically where you're writing on your blog posts, you can actually just have that all live under the same domain and all those requests will be kind of proxied under the hood 
for you, which is kind of nice. You can also do stuff with this colon path star thing. So basically every sub path in blog and you can kind of point it to another destination if you want there. So read up on that. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you all because I've been using Next.js for a while now. I haven't really ran into this use case. But now with building out Project Planner AI and giving people the ability to manage changelog entries basically here and having that be transparent on their own applications, this is the use case that I ran to. And I think it's actually pretty cool. So definitely go check out Project Planner AI if you're looking for a project management tool that's built specifically for like smaller side projects or teams. You can check it out here, Project Planner AI. Um, I'm using it for all my side projects. I find it very convenient to just basically switch around. I'm also using it for planning my YouTube channel. This is like a shameless plug at this point, but let me go to my YouTube channel. I actually started adding work items so I can manage what videos that I want to kind of work on. So you see over here, I have the clack video and the tip tap video already done. But as I get ideas, I'm gonna add those into the to-do column. And then I do plan to use a built-in feedback functionality I have. And I might actually add that directly here so that if you have a suggestion of like what I could make for a YouTube video, I'm actually sorry, that was like kind of blocked over here. Um, but if you have a suggestion of what I should work on for like a video, you can go over here and leave me some feedback and that'll go directly into my feedback section. And I can kind of transition those into actual like video ideas I can work on. Anyway, this is a complete side tangent. Um, again, check out the Next.js config for rewrites. Pretty awesome. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.